Uh, moving on now, a new long-term national development plan, the Nigeria Agenda 2050, designed to make the country the top middle-income economy in the world by 2050 and reduce the unemployment rate to 6.3% from 33% in 2020, has been launched by President Mohamed Buhari. How feasible is this in the wake of rising unemployment? Well, joining me now is the founder of Ego Foundation, Tuluashe Olanio. Thanks for joining me, Tolu. Good morning to you. Good morning, Justin. Thanks for having me here. It is indeed my pleasure. Let's just uh, dive straight into it. Now, KPMG says the unemployment rate in Nigeria increased to 37.7% in 2022 and is expected to rise further uh, to 40.6% due to the continuing inflow of job seekers into the labor market. So, Tolu, explain to me, uh, explain this to me, why more job seekers and fewer jobs. Okay, I mean, so thanks, Justin. Um, so the, the, the increase or the spike is not, um, is not a surprise at all, right? As, um, so over the years, we have had more tertiary institutions who train more people and who churn up more graduates into the labor market, right? Unfortunately, we do not have enough public sector um, system designed to absorb these high rates of um, graduates being churned into the labor market, right? So an average of four to five million, uh, I mean, a rate of four million uh, oh. graduate gets pushed to the labor market every year. And we don't have the same number. We don't even have half of those number of jobs available in the, in, um, um, in the, in the open market. So, it's, um, so, so this is not surprising at all, as it has been said. And um, I mean, for... For, to be on the positive side, we're also hopeful that this number would not skyrocket largely in the days ahead, right? Uh, but every year, we churn out about 4 million young people, young graduates, into the labor market. And hey, the private sector that is supposed to drive and supposed to uh, absorb these numbers are not probably equipped, are not probably um, incentivized. Uh, in fact, are not strong enough, yeah, to even absorb these people. I mean, hence why we have this this number and like the increasing rates. All right, now a new um, think tank uh, they call it um, Agora Policy. It says that the country needs to create at least 3.6 million net new jobs. You are telling me 4 million graduates every year. Well, the the think tank says and 3.6 million net new jobs annually to reduce the current high unemployment rate to about 5% uh, by 2033. That's in three years' uh, time. What should our focus as a country really be uh, since we are having this rise in figures? And um, the president is actually promising a whole lot. But so far, what should we be focusing on as it is right now? Okay, awesome, right? Um, Justin, one of the major things that we need to do and where we need to focus is that it is not the duty of the government to create jobs in any way. And this is one thing that we have gotten wrong over a large period of time. Government designing systems to create jobs. No, it is the function of the private sector to create jobs and to absorb people. What the government is supposed to do is to create an enabling environment for the private sector to flourish so as to be able to absorb a lot more graduate into their system. So the one thing that we need to do is to design um, policies that support large and medium scale businesses to be able to absorb more, improve employment law that would help, um, I mean, these people perform at their optimum level. I mean, for eventual, they want to cut corners. And um, lastly, incentivize the private sector as they then absorb the young people. We know that I mean, so when there are more people working, um, the economy becomes a lot more productive, right? So it is the job of the government. So what, the, what we should do and what the government should do and where we should begin to drive this conversation is to build policies that support the private sector um, to create more jobs and to be able to absorb a lot more people, right? So some of those policies would include, and some of this infrastructure, we also need to put a lot of infrastructure in place. Some of this infrastructure would, in, would include steady power supply and good roads, amazing security. Um, so in Nigeria, the norm is that we do nine to five. Um, a country who does just nine to five cannot 
compete favorably with countries who do 24 hours. Now, it's tough for us to do 24 hours, I mean, um, um, to do 24 hours in Nigeria because, I mean, the elect electricity is poor, oh. um, infrastructure, the security. Um, so, but then if we're able to then put all of these things in place, we would have companies in the private sector performing at the optimum level. And hey, they will then be able to absorb a lot more people into their system. So instead of 9 to 5, so when do 9 to 5, a few people there will then take it forward. Um, so before now, banks who don't have call centers um, would halt their services at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock. Oh. And they've closed and you can't access any banking service until the following day. But now the system is a lot bigger. Um, banks have employed thousands of people to work at their call centers. And this has then created employment. Same thing for telco. We need to model systems like this across board so as to be able to hire more and to be able to get a lot more people engaged in the system. All right. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, the President uh, Mohamed Buhari un uh, unveiled a strategic plan, uh, Nigeria 2050, to cut um, unemployment rate to about 6.3% uh, in about uh, 27 years from now, by 2050. Uh, judging by the antecedents that we have had over time, because this is not the first time we've had economic plans. We, have, uh, we had uh, the ERGP uh, by this same administration not too long ago. But with all of this uh, new policy, as it is, uh, Tolu, is there a glimmer of hope for Nigerians, really? Okay. Um, I mean, is there a grain of hope? Yes. There's, there's always a grain of hope, and that's, that's what has uh, propelled us to this time. However, we would need to unpack the strategy and this policy, right? Oh. Um, um, if not properly implemented, so first thing, if not properly implemented, the strategy would already remain in the books, right? We have seen amazing strategies, amazing um, documents that have been written by successive governments. But unfortunately, we are still where we are today. And it's such a, such a, painful, um, such a painful pain and such a shameful country that has this volume of human capital. But anyway, let's even put that aside. Now, let's, let's face this. Yes. We need to unpack this policy that has been put together by the government to say, how is this workable, right? We also need to be sure that the private sector guys and the private sector practitioners and the private sector players have been properly engaged in this document. And we have not just put together another do government document that is not workable. And that's what has happened over time. We put together government documents that are not workable. At the end of the day, by the time you bring it to... Um, to the market, it, it, it won't just work. We have seen programs, we have seen um, um, initiatives, and at the end of the day, they become, um, I mean, they just become, they, go, they become obsolete before they start. Unfortunately, the document and the program become very obsolete before they start. Oh. So uh, we need to unpack this. Oh, yes, I have seen that um, um, a lot of private sector engagement will be um, done in. Um, in, in the next few years, as as um, as written in the policy, but again, we need to look at it um, um, end to end and be sure that this would work in a country like Nigeria, and this is and this is workable, right? Uh, I mean, but yes, hope um, and I mean, and also with the new administration coming in, I'm sure that it's. Um, uh, I mean, it probably will be able to work with this document. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully, the the new administration would also agree to the policy that have been designed. Uh, I mean, really hopeful about this. All right, a uh, good one. Let's just uh, keep our fingers crossed. Mine are crossed already. Uh, okay, as we round off on this session, to over time, uh, your work skills and project um, you know, has focused uh, on uh, emphasis on giving workability skills to final year students and those in the penultimate year. Why is it important that students uh, who are still in school get um, to know about these workability skills? Uh, what, what's the essence, really? Do we still have to look there? All right, it's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I, I hope I get... Okay, uh, so, um... Hello, Tolu, are you still with us? Can you hear me now? Yes, I am still here. I'm, oh, I'm still oh, with you, Justin. All right, I was asking um, the, the essence of our workability skills and um, um, work. Hello, I, I, I'm still here. Oh, yeah, you can hear me, right? Did you get the question I asked you just now?
All right, I think we still have uh, uh, issues uh, connecting with uh, Tolu. Uh, I would have loved to get um, his um, opinion concerning um, how um, students can actually uh, play out in all of this as we got uh, them getting uh, workability skills. Because over time, we've had to churn out graduates in the country. And when they are out of school, uh, they usually have issues, uh, you know, getting uh, you know, paid employment. Uh, over time, we've had uh, issues like uh, they are not uh, employable, and uh, sometimes they even call them half uh, baked uh, graduates. But then I have to say a big thank you to to Luashi uh, Olani, uh, the uh, founder of. Uh, Ego Foundation, as we have looked into this issue of unemployment, and I really wanted to talk about um, how we can actually uh, do more with workability skills, but we just have to uh, move on right now.